five o'clock here in Moscow. This is RT International with me, Kevin Owen. Our headlines, a poll suggests most Europeans would back an immigration ban on people from Muslim-majority countries as President Trump tries, of course, to push through a similar ban in the U.S. Putin is continuing uh, to advance uh, into Korea. Where? The Russian president's invaded Korea. Well, that's claim anywhere for U.S. Congresswoman, some Americans taking her words at face value, too. If it's North Korea, I, I can't understand by advancing to North Korea, South Korea is a problem. Do you have a message for the Korean people facing this aggression from Russia? Stay safe, uh, be with it, fight the power like us. And German police are being accused of racial profiling after sending a letter to refugee centers and local authorities advising not to invite migrants to upcoming annual carnivals there. What do you think about that? We've got a live discussion coming up, fingers crossed, a bit later in the program. So a lot to come. Hi there, thanks for being with us. First is Sarah. Different news, we're talking about this for a few hours now, but the verdict's in. A Russian court has given opposition figure Alexei Navalny a five-year suspended sentence in what is a high-profile embezzlement case. And here a tutor's been across this. Uh, it took a few hours to uh, read the, the um, verdict and then, then the sentence brings up speed. Yes, yeah, certainly did take a few hours, but the sentencing and verdict has now been completed. The prosecution asked for a five-year suspended sentence, and that's exactly what's been given to Navalny. The judge said that despite the seriousness of the crime, the reason for giving a suspended sentence was because of his positive character. Navalny has spoken out, and he said that he will appeal, and he thinks that he's sure to overturn the decision. Previously, the judge said Alexei Navalny organized an embezzlement scheme with the state-owned timber company in the Russian city of Kirov. It's called Kirovlis. He also said that Navalny committed the crime when he was an aide to the then regional governor. This case is about embezzlement and fraud. We're talking 16 million rubles. That's around $270,000, where a state-owned company lost out through Navalny's actions, according to the allegations. Now, this complicated on-off criminal case was first launched in 2011 so it has been running for almost six years and this latest stage was in fact a retrial if we look at Navalny's profile probably one of the most popular opposition figures in Russia Navalny is almost also also one of the most vocal of Putin's critics he's young an anti-corruption activist and blogger which many will deem as ironic as this case was about embezzlement and fraud now he was planning to run for president in 2018 which he announced in December 2016 but at this stage because of the guilty verdict it's impossible for him to go forward with his plans however the situation could change if he's successful in overturning the decision during his appeal Poll has been released suggesting that the majority of people in 10 EU states would support an immigration ban on Muslim majority countries. That survey was conducted before President Trump signed his controversial executive order doing just that in the states. Laura Smith's got more. Particularly the political class who we think will find this quite surprising. It was done across 10 EU countries and it showed that an average across those countries of 55% of people want to ban future immigration from mainly Muslim countries. And it's not just any poll. It was done by Chatham House, which is a highly renowned centre for research on international affairs, very trusted in government circles. It was done before uh, Trump's controversial order to stop any immigration from those seven uh, mainly Muslim countries, which, of course, we know caused outrage among politicians here. Take a look at this. I signed an executive order to help keep terrorists out of our country. We have to have security in our country. We have to have the ability. When you take some place like Syria, you take all of the different people pouring on. And if you remember, ISIS said, we are going to infiltrate the United States and other countries through the migration. And then we're not allowed to be tough on the people coming in. I clearly explained my position that the fight against terrorism does not justify general measures against defined countries, people or beliefs. It's deeply regrettable and disturbing that the United States has decided to ban refugees and all people from seven countries from traveling to the United States. 
It risks increasing antagonism and shows distrust towards people. There are millions of refugees fleeing the regime's bombs and ISIL atrocities. If we were to abandon them, we would betray what we are. Worrying declarations by the new American administration all make our future highly unpredictable. So now we have the results of this poll and it shows that actually the majorities of people in all but two of the countries surveyed favour a Trump-style ban. Spain and the UK were the ones that didn't so much, but it was still 47% in the UK. And then countries where uh, the most people agreed were uh, Belgium, France, Austria, Austria and Poland, rising to 71% in Poland. And also, interestingly, no country has more than 32% of people who disagreed with a ban. So we've got a situation where the majority of people would favour a ban, but the groundswell of opinion in the political class derides Trump's executive order. So what we're seeing could be uh, another sign that the European establishment is really detached from the concerns and the opinions of the people that they're representing. Laura Smith in London there. Now next, so this is a headline grab of Vladimir Putin's invaded Korea. It's according to one U.S. congresswoman who might need to go back to the drawing board before addressing the press again anytime soon. Putin is continuing uh, to advance uh, into Korea. Did Maxine Waters just say that Russia is advancing into Korea? The Democratic congresswoman seems to be a little out of touch with current events, but perhaps it's an honest mistake. Let's find out if New Yorkers think that big bad Russia is invading Korea. Obviously, it isn't good. <laughs> yeah. I, I would need more information, but um, I, I'm, I'm a little concerned about um, Russia taking action on Korea without any other kind of input. If it's North Korea, um, I, I can't understand by advancing to North Korea. South Korea is a problem. Do you believe that Russia might be attacking Korea? Possibly. I think with everything going on now, there's a lot of, of people around the world, so anything's up in the air. We made this hashtag, actually, Stand for Korea, uh, for the Korean people. Can you hold this for just a second? Sure. Uh, do you have a message for the Korean people facing this aggression from Russia? Stay safe. Uh, be with it. Fight the power like us. Keep, uh, keep moving forward. Many people seemed confused by Waters' words, but didn't buy it. Are you concerned about the Korean people facing this, this onslaught from Russia? I don't think it's true. I have no idea, but it's not true. It's probably a slip of the tongue. She probably meant Crimea, right? But, uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty uh, irresponsible, big error on her part. A lot of elected their people are not so knowledgeable on a lot of topics. It bothers me that all of our elected officials don't seem to know what's going on or really are, are giving a lot of thought to what they're saying to the to the press. Overall, we're trying to fear monger here in the U.S. because we want to uh, build up this kind of intangible fear that's not really there to kind of create our masses to do something in, in spite of what we actually want to do. How can a president uh, who is acting in the manner that he's acting and the fact that uh, he is wrapping his arms around Putin uh, while uh, Putin is continuing uh, to advance uh, into Korea. Yeah, bad day at the office. Now, you may have expected someone to correct maybe the congresswoman slipped during the conference for a bit of damage control. No, the next speaker instead stole the show rather when speaking about the current U.S. president. What could go wrong? Who is it? We'd see nothing that we can work, that I can work with President Bush on, and I'm disappointed because I thought that there might be some interest because of what he said in the campaign. <sighs> well, from politicians confusing countries to media producing fake news next, separating fact from fiction. Tricky, isn't it? Well, now the French newspaper Le Monde has come up with an app to help the public, like us, spot false information. But a helping hand may do more harm than good, as Kate Partridge explains. At a time when we're being bombarded with fake news, a tool that will help you decide what's the fake news and what's genuine sounds like a fantastic idea. Well, the website for French newspaper Le Monde has come up with a special app to help you determine what is fake news. It's very simple to use. All you need to do is tap in the name of a website and it will give you a grade, either green, yellow or red. Green means that it's a creditable website, that it has reliable sources and that they've been checked. 
Yellow means that it could also be a solid news outlet, but it has made some mistakes, so perhaps treat with a little bit of scepticism. And red means that you should really treat this with some particular caution. We don't know, but we're looking at probably fake news here. And on that basis, I'm joined in the studio by French economist Jacques Zafir. Jacques, thank you very much for joining me. What do you think about the idea by Le Monde to create this website? They want to build a kind of firewall against fake news. Great. But seriously, it's mostly an ideological idea, you know. This, this idea of to say, well, we have the truth. The truth is what we are saying and everything else is not the truth. We look at your own particular website and that seems to be coming up yellow. What yeah. do you think of that? Everybody knows that we, we have to use sometimes this kind uh, of information but of course we are saying that, well, it's not confirmed. A panel run by a newspaper and, and a newspaper which is notoriously known to be making very ideological stance. So uh, I think that this idea is destroying the very thing that they want to build. Let's look, for instance, at the Washington Post. Yes. Uh, the Washington Post has been caught red-handed in posting fake news because you look at some of the stories that came through. First of all, there was the story about the Russian hackers, yes. when supposedly Russian hackers had gone through to the electrical out outlet in Le Vermont. Monde too. Le Monde too, because Le Monde uh, reused the same information used by the Washington Post. And then later, of course, they had the correction as well. Yes. And a similar thing happened when they were saying that about RT before. They were saying, that RT had not responded to a particular issue about audience figures and that was not the truth either and of course then another correction followed. So working on that basis, shall we have a look at the Washington Post and see what they get when it comes to their own score? Unsurprisingly, it's green. Well, you know, um, I am green, my friends are green, and the people who are not my friend are not green. That's all. That's exactly the rationale of the whole operation. Should we try how CNN goes and see yeah. what colour they come up with as well? What colour do you think? Green. green. There'd be no surprise <laughs> there. Well, then you've already preempted it. And let's try RT itself and see what happens when it comes through. And that's come through as yellow. Is that a surprise to you at all? No. I think that the most dangerous thing behind this idea of Decodex, they are politicizing the whole story of truth. And this is a very, very dangerous path to follow. Ah, that mainstream media. But they've got a heart, you know. Many main, uh, mainstream media outlets have been obsessing over Donald Trump's health of late. Not necessarily because they're concerned about his well-being. Take a look. Ladies and gentlemen, new Trump bashing trend. Just call him crazy. Trump's bash crazy. The problem is Trump's so crazy. Think. Calling Trump crazy. Oh, right. Who cares about Trump's crazy racist See, serious experts are seriously discussing if Trump is seriously mentally unstable. Psychiatrists believe that Donald Trump is displaying too many symptoms of mental instability. If he's unstable. Like mentally unstable? I do believe he's mentally unstable. So why is he unstable? Well, perhaps because he turns off his lights at night, eats red meat, and doesn't go to the gym. Apparently, all of the above are a sign of a serious mental illness. I mean, basically, we have a psychopath running for president. There's also the issue of mental health clinically insane. Or maybe it's just because old Trump bashing, like calling him everything from a racist to a pussy grabbing misogynist. Donald Trump is racist. A president who's endorsed by the KKK. Sexist? Well, just doesn't work anymore. Miguel Francis Santiago, RT. News here from Iberia. Huge explosions caused a fire at a chemical factory in the city of Paterna in Valencia, Spain. Fire crews at the scene. They've been there all morning. Thankfully, a bit of good news. No casualties reported, but authorities are asking locals to stay away from the area around that factory. It was a big explosion there. Uh, one tweet in from the City Civil Protection Association says the fire's under control. We reported that last hour, though they're still saying it's not extinguished. If we get more on that or it goes up any further, we'll, of course, let you know. This is RT International, thanks for being with us. I uh, hope you can stay with us too in the coming minutes because after the break we're planning on a live debate on how German authorities are handling tensions these days over the big influx of migrants to join the country. It's coming right up, 90 seconds away.
what people have been saying about Redacted tonight. Give it to us. Redacted is full on awesome. Really? The only show I go out of my way to watch oh, every week. Really it really packs a punch. Wow. Lee Camp is the John Oliver of RT America. You guys the same accent. Hey, we are apparently better than boobs. Nothing's better than boobs. You see, people that. you've never heard of love Redacted tonight. Yeah. The president of the world bank, though, hates it. Yeah, he doesn't really have any taste. Seriously, he sent us an email. People with stories to tell. Those who deserve to be heard. Studded inside out. But still with unrevealed secrets. Leaders, politicians, thinkers, and witnesses. They're here to speak. Are you there to hear? Hello again. Police in the German state of North Rhine-Westphalia being accused of racial profiling after advising refugees not to come to carnival celebrations. Now, this letter apparently was sent to refugee centres and state authorities in Cologne. It said that the force wanted to avoid undesired interactions with others attending the celebrations. It also recommended migrants undergo police searches without complaint. Police later confirmed the letter was sent out uh, wrongly and issued an apology. The letter was internal and unauthorized. The situation shouldn't be exaggerated. It shows how the police think. We want to protect everyone celebrating a peaceful carnival, including refugees, especially in Cologne, where so many people with migrant backgrounds live. This type of policy would have been unthinkable. Well, after the incident, the police were accused of racial profiling. Don't know what you think about that. A spokeswoman for the Green Party has chipped in as well, criticising the letter, saying that refugees can't be kept away from these celebrations simply because of someone's subjective opinion of what safety is or not. Let's talk about this with Ren Ziaro, founder of the German Democratic Alliance, and Hugh Bronson, a member of Alternative for Germany. Guys, thanks for your time today. Nice to see you. I'm going to go to you, Ren Ziaro, champing at the bit, I think. What do you think about this? All right, the police sent out this letter. Then this kind of same excuse that, well, it shouldn't have gone out. Either way, it's hugely inflammatory, isn't it? It's uh, uh, strange because, uh, you know, um, uh, in the, the idea of this letter, um, uh, if you look at it uh, closely, is uh, against the German constitution, where you are not allowed to, uh, to d differentiate between religions, colors, or uh, beliefs, or whatsoever. And it's really strange, you know, in German carnival, um, you have uh, songs, uh, millions of songs, where uh, it is uh, normal, where you get together and uh, uh, where people do strange things that they do, uh, normally not do, uh, outside of Carnival. And uh, suddenly, if it comes to migrants, uh, it is uh, felt as a threat and as dangerous. And so, for me, it's a big question mark mm. what the intention uh, behind this uh, could be. Well, was it a genuine mistake or was, it, was there more to it? Was the sentiment of it actually meant beyond the, the, the scenes here? What do you think about it, Hugh Bronson? Well, I mean, the police is just responding to facts. If you look at uh, what happened last year, what happened um, this year, um, it's overwhelming evidence that the people who come to this country, um, a lot of them migrants, are trying to, to rape and to assault women. We've seen it in last year's what carnival. What proof have you We've got of it, that? What proof uh, have you got? That's a huge accusation. Sorry, Hugh. Exactly, Sorry, Hugh. Uh, Sorry, Hugh. Uh, Sorry, Hugh. Happening this year. Sorry, Hugh. That's a huge accusation to make to say that um, an awful lot of the migrants that have come in there fleeing some awful situations are trying to rape in your country. What are you basing that on? Well, this is according to police records. Um, we're just quoting figures, and the police is responding accordingly. They advise refugees, so-called refugees and migrants, please do not take part in the carnival because people are no longer prepared to tolerate this. This is just a, a matter of fact. Mm. Any thoughts, Ramsey? So is it 
So it's interesting that uh, uh, migrants or uh, asylum seekers um, are uh, titulated as uh, rapers uh, in general. So I grew up in Germany and uh, I uh, lived uh, dozens of uh, carnivals. And um, uh, Mr. Bronze also knows if he has been in carnival that uh, the people drink and they do strange things. Mm. And it's interesting, uh, and I have no, uh, I have no statistic, nothing, that uh, people come to carnival uh, to rape other people. People, this is you know, this is really stupid. This is bullshit. Yeah. Sorry. Well, listen. This uh, oh, but, um, m m must watch the language, of course, on this channel. Don't say anything. Uh, no swearing, etc. <laughs> now, the um, letter mentioned that migrants are recommended to undergo police searches without complaint. But there's nothing said about German citizens here. Um, w wouldn't it just be better to check everybody and be less divisive? Because whether you like it or not, the migrants in your country are in Germany. Uh, they were welcomed in by Angela Merkel. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, shouldn't it just be handled better, Hugh? Well, of course, this would be um, a clever approach if you had the personnel to do that. Um, the numbers of police is limited. So they look at the most likely people who would commit offenses. In 2016 alone, more than 2,000 people were stopped from Morocco, Algeria and Tunisia by police and searched. Now, this is not a coincidence. We never had this uh, culture before. Uh, if you look at New Year's Eve celebration this year and last year, that never happened before in Cologne, that you have um, mass reports of women being assaulted and attacked and the police is just responding accordingly. The blame should not be put at the police but at the people who are committing these offences. Mm. I mean, whether you like it or not, whether you agree with the policy or not, the refugees, we were talking to people in Austria and in Innsbruck on New Year's Eve. The women that we spoke to, OK, it was just a, a spot poll on the street. Maybe not everyone feels like that. We don't know. Just the people we spoke to generally felt unsafe that night. Let's listen, come straight back to you. I don't feel that safe as a woman going around, especially in the night, in the dark hours. In the evening, I don't feel as safe as I did a couple of years ago. Politicians should be making changes. The political situation needs to change. As for the sex assaults, it's terrible that they're happening here as well. I'm not scared, but it's no longer nice to go out in Innsbruck during the evenings. Ramsey, they seem pretty genuine about what they're saying. They're women that say we're afraid to go out at yes. night. I think I think you know uh, if you have news in Germany that uh, a bus accident happened and there was a crash suddenly uh, you have always every week a bus accident and there's a crash I think this is a felt unsafety I think it's also uh, some uh, responsibility of the media how they show it and uh, it's now again and again and again uh, repeated uh, that uh, mm. things happened and I, uh, I I don't know one single statistic that would prove um, this uh, behavior that uh, New Year's uh, Eve in general, uh, in total in Germany, uh, is unsafer or uh, in a different way than it was uh, years and years before. And it's the same with the carnival. And um, I've, been, I've lived carnival in uh, many cities for many years. And I know that uh, I don't think that it is safer or unsafer if migrants are there or not. I think it's a felt unsafety uh, and not a fact unsafety. And uh, it is really interesting. And uh, it's normal that parties like um, uh, the party of Mr. Hugh Bronson uh, f try to yeah. make uh, votes out of this uh, yeah, Hugh, news that they... Uh, that Hugh Bronson, you're just buying unsafety. into the media hype here, just scaring people. So what, that's the accusation. Well, not exactly. I mean, I'm talking to Mr. Aru, and Mr. Aru has problems uh, accepting violence as a historical fact. Look at what happened in Turkey during the First World War. Mr. Aru doesn't accept that the Turkish government at the time murdered, murdered more than a half a million Armenians. Now, he is actually in denial of this. Now, I don't want to discuss this with someone who can accept historical facts. It's very, very difficult. Um, let's just talk about the way Angela Merkel's changed on this, guys, for a minute. Uh, we're, we're, we're running out of time. We've only got a couple of minutes left. Angela Merkel started off by saying, Germany, the powerhouse of Europe, is an open door for these people. Come on, guys, come in. It's backfired on her. She's changed the tune, no matter how you look at it. Let's just remind ourselves. The feel is... is for refugees, it will be best to stay close to their countries. The EU has to tackle the root causes by creating safe havens close to their countries of origin. I know how important it is to welcome those refugees into Germany. It's the responsibility of all of Europe. 
Yeah, if you're a refugee that initially thought here you were going over to Germany, the powerhouse of Europe, for a bit of safety, you'd be mm. confused by how the chancellors changed tune here, wouldn't you? Well, first of all, I don't believe a single you know, word you know. Ms. Merkel is saying. To me, it is lip service. Um, the policy, policy doesn't change. This year, everything has been, the ball has been kept down, it's been kept quiet because there's a very important election, a general election on the 24th of September. A policy remains unchanged. No matter what she says, if you look at the records, you will find the truth. Uh, final word from you, Rebsy, if you would. Give us your thoughts on the way uh, uh, Merkel's danced around this. I think, um, you know, uh, if you look at the uh, balance, um, you see that uh, Germany uh, has done things to uh, bring the immigration uh, in a way uh, that has been a controlled immigration. And I don't think that we'll live again, that one or two million people will come. And uh, so Germany, uh, step by step, uh, uh, begins to understand that uh, finally the proposal that Mr. Erdogan in Turkey made five, six years ago that safe zones should be uh, organized in Syria was the right thing. Everybody ignored that and nobody was interested until the moment the first migrants uh, stand, uh, stood in front of the frontiers and now they try to handle it. Guys. But I think it will not be uh, a, a big problem uh, for Mrs. Merkel because uh, right now uh, she has, uh, she's very lucky that uh, the events that happen in the United States, that Mr. Trump, how he acts, uh, the people can see what would happen if a party like the IFD would uh, be in power or would uh -huh. have uh, some shares of the power. And so this will guys, support leave her very much uh, to, uh, to get votes. All right, thanks for your thoughts, guys. Thanks for your time. Remzi Arrow, founder of the German Democratic Alliance, you bronze yes, member of the thank you very AFD much. party. Thank you very much. Have a good yeah, day. Thanks for having me. Thank bye bye. You. Thank you. And I hope your day's going good too. I hope you can stay with us for hours to come. In fact, after the break here, going underground with Afshin Ratanzi. It's our next programme here on RT International.